Good day, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Oh my God, R2-D2. Star Wars was one of the most successful movies of all times, but R2 was one of the best things in the movie. The last one I saw on the internet was going for about $600. I would go probably $550. Why don't you split it with me for $500 and we got a deal. Whoa, $500. It's a $120 machine. I don't care. I like it. Today, we will show you all the deals that eventually failed in Pawn Stars. <laughs> Is a tire from Dale Earnhardt's car signed by Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt is probably the best NASCAR racer to ever live. The guy won 76 races, seven Winston Cup championships, and the Daytona 500. The problem I have with certificates like that, anybody can make them. How much are you looking to get out of it? 1,500. All right, let's take a look. Well, it's written with a uh, gold felt tip pen. His capital D and his L are usually similar in shape. A lot of the patterns look appropriate, but I don't know. Pokemon Charizard cards. In this episode, it was shown that a customer, Gary, had a vast collection of Pokemon cards and figures, including a pristine 10 first edition Charizard. Chop. Yeah? This guy's got Pokemon cards. It's Pokemon. Collecting with my sons, and eventually they grew up and went to college, and I never did grow up. It's really popular. They have whole tournaments with a thousand people enter, and they have Pokemon battles. I really don't understand why Pokemon is such a big deal. They're pretty cool. Actually, some of them can be worth a lot of money. So these go for a lot of money. What's your most expensive one? Uh, the most expensive card is probably the pristine 10 in the range of 50 to 100,000. Whoa. Especially now with the new Pokemon craze. The new Pokemon game everyone's playing on their phone? Pokemon Go. No. So how much do you want for these things? I'm looking for right in the area of $500,000. I'm happy that the expert is coming in to educate the fellow. Gary was interested in selling the collection and set the asking price at $500,000. Chumley was knowledgeable about these cards, but Rick was unaware of their value. So Rick enlisted the help of an expert to evaluate the collection. He's got... Pokemon cards and... Pokemon. Pokemon cards. Charizard's like one of the best characters in the game. He's also one of the most collectible characters. Rated 10s, I believe there's less than 50 PSA 10s in existence. There's 20% of the market sitting on your counter. I look at this collection and I just can't believe my eyes. This is a one of a kind collection. This one here, there's only one of them in existence. Beckett grades so much harsher than PSA does. This card could go 30 to 40,000. I'm estimating anywhere from 380 to 390,000 for this collection. My problem with these is if I go to sell them, I can't have any conversation about them because I know absolutely nothing. It's out of my skill set. Thank you. Rick did not make an offer because he believed that selling the collection would be difficult. As a result, the deal was not completed. Handwritten lyrics. A woman named Donnie brought in a handwritten document of my country tis of thee and hoped to sell it for $10,000. Samuel Francis Smith was a really interesting guy. He said he had traveled to every single country in Europe. He ended up writing this song and he put it to a German and him, it slowly but surely became our unofficial national anthem. But um, there's some serious damage on this thing. The sun has made it turn yellow. You know, this was on white paper at right, one time. Right. And it really concerns me, this ink being this black. And how much were you looking to get out of it? 10,000. Rick had an expert authenticate it, but unfortunately, the document was not authentic. Oh, so it's large format. Yeah. OK. You don't need your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, the ones that I've seen, they're really small. I do want to take a look at the signature itself. Very neat, very legible. And we see kind of the same type of formations. We're looking at literally the same thing. The signature matches up with mine. Although the signature matched, there were inconsistencies in the handwriting, including odd skipping and ink that was too black. On the other hand, you take a look right here under magnification. You see some odd skipping. That's something that's not really totally consistent. If you're crossing over, usually the pen's not gonna skip like that. You're gonna have a straight flow through. If you're writing in a pen or writing quill, fountain pen, whatever you're using, the ink will start to run out. By the time you reach here, that ink's gonna start to run dry. It's not an original. The expert concluded that the document was likely manufactured in mass and had no real value. Although Donnie was disappointed, Rick refused to purchase the document and recommended that she either keep it or give it away. Well, sorry, that's um, I'm obviously not interested in it. <laughs> Can you hear my heart breaking? Hey, it, it, it was a neat conversation, though, and thanks for bringing it in. The experience left Donnie feeling let down as she hoped the document was authentic and valuable. R2-D2 Cooler. A customer, Eric, brought a Star Wars Vault R2-D2 Cooler 
hoping to sell it for $600. Oh my God, R2-D2. He is kind of a part of the family. It's a lot of sentimental value more than it is just price value. R2-D2 never spoke, so he only did clicks, beeps, and whistles. So Star Wars was one of the most successful movies of all times, but R2 was one of the best things in the movie. It's all plastic, it's in good shape, it's not cracked. There's a lot of Star Wars collectors out there, so I'm sure I could sell this cooler. The last one I saw on the internet was going for about $600. Eric felt sentimental value towards it and was willing to part with it to free up some garage space. But I'll give you $300 cash money. Yeah. I'm looking to get quite a bit more than that. I would go probably $550. Richard offered $300 cash, but the customer was looking for a higher price. Why don't you split it with me for $500 and we got a deal? Whoa, $500. It's a $120 machine. I don't care. I like it. It looked great on the patio. Yeah, $500 is the top time going to go, Kyle. I guess he's just been in the family too long. So you're not going to take it? No. Thank you. You're a oh, Corey. I really wanted to. Richard suggested splitting the difference and offering $500, but... Eric declined and decided to keep the cooler. Sterling Silver Inkwell. A person named Steve brought a Gorman Sterling Silver Inkwell to sell. Steve offered to sell the inkwell for $3,800. Rick was interested in purchasing the item, but wanted to verify the authenticity of the claim. Gorm Sterling Silver Inkwell, William Andrews Clark owned it. I'd like to sell it because my wife and I's 10th anniversary is coming up and I'd like to do something special for it. It's an inkwell? It's an inkwell. Oh, okay. You had to dip your pen in the ink and then write, and then dip your pen in the ink and write. Basically, he wanted a railroad from Salt Lake City to Southern California, and it went right through Las Vegas. I'd like uh, around $3,800 for it. He decided to call in Mark, who was well-versed in historical artifacts. This would have been from the National Irrigation Congress. A lot of the big dams in the West and the water projects in the West came out of lobbying from the National Irrigation Congress. But to have one that specifically ties back to William Andrews Clark, now that's something special. It looks to be in wonderful shape. It's a neat piece. Realistically, can you fake anything? Yeah, you can. But yes. This is William Andrews Clark. This would be something that would be extraordinarily unlikely to fake. Mark confirmed that the inkwell was indeed made by Gorman, stating that it was a valuable piece of history that belonged in a museum. It's neat, it's one of a kind, but who's gonna wanna buy it? I would give you like 800 bucks for it. $800 is just not gonna get it. Inkwells from that period were pretty common, everyone had one. You know, I go down to like uh, 2,800. It's not gonna happen. Rick made an offer of $800, but Steve refused the offer. Dale Earnhardt signed tire. A customer named Mark brought an attire autographed by Dale Earnhardt. Mark's wife purchased the tire from the sports memorabilia shop and later had it autographed by Dale Earnhardt and sent it back to them. It's a tire from Dale Earnhardt's car signed by Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt is probably the best NASCAR racer to ever live. The guy won 76 races, seven Winston Cup championships, and the Daytona 500. And when my wife got the tire, it came with this. The problem I have with certificates like that, anybody can make them. How much are you looking to get out of it? 1500 Rick and Corey were interested in buying it, but they had some concerns. So they decided to call an expert. Dale Earnhardt's got seven overall championships, and his signature is rare. All right, let's take a look. Well, it's written with a uh, gold felt tip pen. His capital D and his L are usually similar in shape. A lot of the patterns look appropriate, but I don't know. If you put everything together, well, somebody signed this, but it wasn't Dale Earnhardt. The Earnhardt should be over in the middle, and the capital E, this should be coming down much further and then hooking up. Okay. Thanks for bringing it in. The expert concluded that it was not authentic. Disappointed, but grateful for the expert's help, Mark decided to keep the tire as a cherished souvenir. Byzantine coin. A customer named Chester walked into the store with a rare coin, hoping to sell it for $1,900. Had a few friends look at it, and everyone swears it's from the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire was around for so long because they were so well organized. Coins like this, they are recognized all over the world. How much you want for it? I was thinking about 1900. The coin is claimed to be from the Byzantine Empire and is believed to be genuine. It might be hard selling this to one of my typical customers. Probably right around 1100, I'm thinking. You see how thin the coin is? Their economy was declining and they devalued the money. I'll give you like 800 bucks for it. Nah, that's, that's a little bit too low. The condition's not great. Can you do like 16? I'll go 1100 bucks. 11? 
Yeah, I guess we do a lot of <laughs> However, things didn't quite turn out as well as he'd hoped. Rick called in an expert to determine the true value of the coin. What year do you think this is? This coin is not dated any more specifically than the reign of Constantine the Ninth, sometime between 1042 and 1055 AD. So is it the real deal or? Looks good. Good question, what's it worth? Well, I see these going typically in the marketplace today for between $700 and $1,000 in this condition. That's it? Yeah. Perhaps in the future, they'll be more cautious when making such purchases and seek expert opinions before making a final decision. 1958 Glastron Boat. A customer, Jimmy, arrived in the parking lot with a 1958 Sea Flight Glastron Boat that he hopes to sell for $10,500. There's probably only 150 of these boats left. Everyone loved the style of the 57 Chevy, so let's come out with a boat that looks like a 57 Chevy. It's definitely tempting because it's an iconic look. Everything had fins. Anything they could make rocket like was cool at the time. Time. Does it work? Yeah. All right. But boats are tough to sell, so it has to be a home run. I mean, you got all the original chrome and everything seems to be here. How much did you want for it? 10-5. However, upon closer inspection, they noticed that the boat had several flaws, including a poor paint job and a missing original motor. I mean, we have a terrible paint job. It doesn't have the original motor. Just the styling, and can you even find one? But it's still all about making money, and there's no money here for me. I don't even want to make you an offer. There's too much work that's got to be done. No. Okay. This guy doesn't know Jimmy was disappointed with Rick's assessment and felt that he was being insulted over petty issues. Ultimately, the boat remained unsold as Rick and Chumley decided not to take on the project. Rip Van Winkle. A customer named Sean brought out a copy of Rip Van Winkle with the hope of selling it for $1,500. Rick mentioned that Washington Irving was the first great American author, and Arthur Rockman was a famous artist. Rip Van Winkle gets trashed and wakes up years later. But when he wakes up, his wife is dead, his kids are grown, everything has changed. Over a hundred year old book. The pictures in the thing are fantastic. First really great American author. This looks like a full size book, but it only goes for 60 pages. That's cool. The prints are really pretty. They're great. In the 1800s, books like this with fine art were considered very high-end collectibles. I'm looking to get 1500 for the book. However, Rick had some concerns, so he decided to call Rebecca to check on it. What's illustrated by Arthur Rackham? There's this era called the Golden Age of Illustration. Rackham is sort of the king of the Golden Age. And I can tell you, just by looking at the title page, this is not a first edition. The book's condition was not ideal, which significantly decreased its value. Given the condition, which obviously makes a huge difference, I would probably place it more around like 300. After a thorough examination, Rebecca determined that the book's value was far less than Sean's asking price. That's what I'll give you, 50 bucks for the thing. I know she said it was worth $300, but I just don't see it flying off the shelf. And 150 sounds like a perfect price to settle on then. I give you $75. Not even 100. Nope, 75 bucks. That's cash right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rick offered Sean $75, which he accepted, but felt a little disappointed. Jesse James Tin Types Photos. The customer, Scott, attempted to sell tin type photographs of the James Gang for $60,000. According to Scott, he acquired the photographs from an estate sale in Hawaii and believed them to be legitimate. This is really, really cool. By the way, that is like the worst way in the world you could store those photographs. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sell them because I've got a horse farm. Things have tightened up. I really need the cash. Well, I've been able to match them all up off of these various websites. I matched up those faces. I about fell out of my chair. The most famous outlaws of the Old West, period. Even with bounties on their heads, local people never turned them in. Everyone loved them, supposedly. Those are the stories. If these are actual photos of Jesse James and the James Gang, we have a ridiculously big find here. So how much do you want for them? $60,000 for the complete set. Rick suggested consulting an expert to assess the photos before finalizing the sale. When you look at an historic image, what you have to look for is where it doesn't fit the shape of the nose, the shape of the eyebrows. That doesn't change through life. You just don't find unknown photographs of these people. Okay. They're obviously about the same time period. There's some similarities, but... Mm, the nose is not right. Are any of these of the James gang? Uh, 
I don't believe so. However, Scott was informed that the photographs were not genuine and would not be able to fetch a high price on the market. Mark really knows what he's talking about. Sorry, I'd give you 10 bucks a piece for him, but I don't think you're going to take it. Thank you for your time. Scott ultimately decided to keep the photographs as a personal memento of his interest in the James Gang and the Old West. Benjamin Air Pistol. This time, a customer, Paul, brought in an old air pistol to sell at the shop, hoping to get $600 for it. It's amazing that they gave them the kids. The air pistol still works today. It's in great condition. I had it completely refurbished. It's pretty simple. You take this, you cock it back like that. Okay. And you keep on doing that, and you pump up a lot of pressure. You pull it back, and then you take a pellet, and you put them in there, and you close this. It's not loaded, but just for safety's sake. Ow! There's nothing in it. it. Well, something was in it. But as far as price, it's not as valuable as, say, an antique firearm. Rick said that he had never seen one in the box like this before, but argued that the gun wasn't as valuable as an antique firearm. So how much were you looking to get out of it? 600. Mmm, that's awfully high for this gun. If you had one from like 1910, that's a completely different story. I'm thinking like $75. Uh, I'm hoping to get at least $200 for this. Uh, I, I will tell you, I've never seen one new in the box like this. Um, I mean, I'd go like a hundred and a quarter. I got to get at least 200 out of this. I can't do it. I just don't see it at 200 bucks. Paul left without selling the air pistol, feeling that Rick's offer barely paid for his 55 years of being a good custodian of it. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to comment, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video with your family and friends. See you soon.